You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Redneck Island After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Redneck Island After Show. Beer skinning, beer drinking, Johnny Cash listening. Redneck Island, but this time it is a very special episode because this is the finale, and I'm so excited. We have a full room right now, and I can't wait to tell you who's here. For those of you who are listening, for those of you who are watching can see, but sitting next to me in the studio, we have the superstar touted by Vince McMahon as the most profitable wrestler of all time. So if you've watched his career, right? <laughs> if you've watched his career, you know why he holds six WWE World Championships. So he carries with him a real strong passion, not just for wrestling, but <coughs> life, which drives him to excel at anything he does. And currently, that is a new podcast called The Steve Austin Show on Podcast One. It airs twice weekly. I love it. I'm a fan. I follow it. So uh, in the studios with us, ladies and gentlemen, the Texas Rattlesnake Stone Cold Steve Austin. You always make me sound like a million dollars every time I come on this show. The second time I've been on this show, so awesome. that was a hell of a damn introduction. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank I'm glad you. to be back. Wow, it's great to have you back. Um, real quick, let me just finish the introductions over here. We have Catfish named by the Redneck Island Three cast. It took us a while. Good old to Catfish. Out. Good old Catfish is back. Patrick. They uh, part of the PP hey, hey. Boys. They've got their dog uh, Snow White Snow with White. us. Over here on the couch, beautiful, gorgeous, former oh. Miss Great Britain, Liz Fuller. Thanks, sweetie pie. Hello. And next to her, naughty boy, naughty boy, <laughs> Patrick, Paul, fashion designer. So welcome everybody. I'm so excited to start the show with you. But um, before we break this show down, uh, I get a lot of emails <laughs> from the cast members. Uh, they. Uh, I get a lot of emails from the cast members because uh, they are they are very connected with each other, and they felt like there was a bond with you, Steve, even though when they got evicted or they got voted out uh, and they had to leave immediately, they, they felt uh, that there wasn't a sense of closure. So before we get started, I'd like to give you a few names and maybe if you could think of something nice to say about a few of these people. <laughs> Would that be okay? Hell, I thought I was going to get a chance to cut a promo on them. You want me to say something <laughs> nice about them? That's a whole different step and a whole different direction, but I'll work with you. Okay, well. I love these curveballs you always throw at me. <laughs> yeah, bring out the best in me. All right, well, Amnesty was the first to go. She was so, we didn't even get a chance to connect with her. She was gone like that. Was she, uh, did you get a chance to say anything to her before she left? No, God like the wind. Uh, yeah. She came in, beautiful young lady, and got, well, she didn't get picked when we was drawing up the sides. And hell, I had to kind of go back and start thinking about this show, because the first time I come on here, y'all break, break down this show like a bunch of scientists. I just hosted it. <laughs> Last night, I was live tweeting so much I could barely watch it. So, but anyway, Amnesty, uh, a real, really nice young lady. Yeah. Didn't get a chance to know her, didn't get picked on one of the sides, and so she rode off into the sunset, and I hope she's doing well. Bailey eliminated right after her. She uh, actually was blindsided, didn't see that one coming. Boy, I would have liked to have seen more of her. Mm, she was Bailey, a sometimes, you know, life's going to blindside you. Yeah. She got blindsided yeah. on Redneck Island. It does happen. And then Mike, we got to see Mike. He was the third one voted out, by the way. It was Mike that sent these koozies to us, FedEx, that Aww. we're drinking from. Isn't that nice? He's the Good Redneck Island. 
Mike was very sweet, wasn't he? Yeah. He was a nice guy. And he yeah. was the guy that had the problem with his knee, wasn't it? No, that was... No, he was sure. That's Philip. That was Philip. Yeah. 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 Oh, Mike's my little girl. Mike was the exterminator, and I always knew yeah. that. Why? That was the reason he was always bugging me, because he was an exterminator. <laughs> <laughs> so did you put that question <laughs> Mike and I have been, I've been staying up with Mike on Twitter. Hey, Mike, how you doing? That is so nice. Um, after Mike came Phil, and i got to tell you, I give a lot of props mm -hmm. to Phil. He's the one with the bad knee. He's yeah. the one with the abscess tooth that turned out we found out later he was suffering with the... Also, I think that was the week, the, the week that Phil got eliminated, that's the week that you really start to warm to the characters because yeah. the first few weeks, you know, like with Amnesty, I didn't remember Amnesty and it's mm -hmm. because it's too soon. It takes three or four weeks to get into the characters and learn to love who you like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Besides the yeah. fact that our impression of what we thought they were supposed to be, kind of were tweaked e as each week progressed, and we thought, oh, well, she's going to use her boobs, and she didn't, and Candy. she's going to use her, her know-how, and she didn't, and... Well, it was, it was interesting. interesting. It was interesting because we were coming out here, you know, they'd usually like to get us all travel that island separately, but uh, Amnesty was behind me oh. in the check-in line going through security. Huh. And there's a cute chick in L.A. Uh, <laughs> wearing we camouflage. No, no, but <laughs> wearing camouflage in L.A. Ooh. airport. And I'm thinking, I, you know, something's up here. I know this girl's going to Redneck Island because you don't see too many cute women, blondes, in L.A. wearing she, camo. So She recognized you, I'm sure, out of the lineup. Probably, probably did, and uh, maybe, you know, probably oh. smelled like beer and figured it was me. <laughs> I was going to lead this illustrious crew to glory on Redneck Island, and we did not fail. But mm. she rode off into the sunset, Bailey got blindsided. Uh -huh. Poor Phil, you know, and yeah. Mike Gill, the exterminator, good cat. And Phil, tough cat. You gotta, you love this guy because he was tough. He gritted up, had a bad tooth. You gotta brush him damn teeth, Phil. I don't know how he got that abscess. <laughs> then blew his knee out. Tried to make a comeback. A valiant effort against uh, Cody and the yep. tug of war gimmick. Mm -hmm. So he kicked ass, yeah. but finally, you know, he got. Sent he back was in. my, he was my favorite in the very beginning, thinking that Phil was gonna take it all the way to the end because yeah. he was playing under the radar. You said I thought that. everybody was yeah. gonna like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was a likable guy, except for when Travis threw him under the bus at the tug of war. Yeah. 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 And we had a conversation with him about that. Yeah. And then I, after Travis actually came our favorite girl. Uh, it was kind of, she was a crowd favorite for yes. us, and that was oh, Woodle. Woodle. Yeah. We oh, love Woodle. Oh, I love Woodle. Woodle. She's <laughs> badass, man. You talk about competitor, man. She was game. That rope ladder gave her uh, problems on the, the when you run and jump and get the, the beer off the platform. But, man, she kicked ass and dominated and a sweetheart of a girl. You know she's what? she's Honey Woodle Boo. Yeah. <laughs> honey Woodle Boo. <laughs> what works for me? Woodle says she's going to get skinny and come to Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. She's your new signing. Yeah. How many times have we heard that? <laughs> I, that I'm in Hollywood. I'm still not skinny, but I'm still not here. You do not have to be skinny to make it in this town. Uh, Bring it on, Woodle. You can make it. She's yeah. such a tough competitor. She'll do just fine. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, she would have I, I feel like we're actually playing the uh, final part of the last elimination challenge right now. With uh, you got to remember oh, yeah. how we trivia. eliminated yeah. the trivia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which bucket, everyone kept right? getting messed up yeah. on. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So after Woodle was, um, because I'm the only one with the answers. So Ooh, well, that's candy. cheating. Candy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. No, help us out Stacey. here, Stacy. Think of the guy with the beard. Oh, no, no, oh, it was Brandon. Uh, uh, Brandon. Yeah, Brandon. That's right. right. And, Stacey, yeah. and Brandon kind of played a real low-key role. I was really surprised with Brandon. One of his highlights was when he confessed that he was not going to put Lindsay's name on a can. I don't, do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> it was just, it was like, yeah. really, he was, uh, he just kind of played too many of his cards up front, and then it cost him, mm. actually. After Brandon came a real, what, do you remember? This, this was, wasn't it Stacy? No. Sta no. Candy. No, you guys, no. this was, unfortunately, he played a real... Oh, Philip. No, Joe. Oh. Joe. Oh. Joe. See, we would have <laughs> We would have totally know. lost, Steve. I swear, we totally would have lost at the end. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? Joe played a really quiet game. Joe I Joe was interesting, Cat, man. I tell you what, it seemed like he was juiced up about halftime. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's my fault for having too much alcohol on the island. But I'll tell you what, man, that guy gave it all he had, and he had a damn good time. So, good, uh, Joe, oh, if you're seeing this or hearing this, how, how are you? You did a damn good job. Yeah. Joe mm -hmm. made one, I think, one mistake, and that was asking Candy to do the dishes. <laughs> uh -oh. was like, that was funny, that? though. Yeah, yeah. I didn't fly too good. <laughs> that was funny. She didn't like mm -hmm. that. But um, speaking speaking of Candy, actually, she was the next one out, and she wasn't um, she wasn't voted out. She lost was the she? food. Yeah. That was yeah, the food after, one. After Joe came, Candy, and yeah. she couldn't eat. Shady burrito. Wow. Look what you did. <laughs> you yeah, lost yeah, a tough man. competitor because you put 
an octopus in front of her and pig lips and oh, pies. Oh, so awful. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, sounds, no. like a yeah. sounds like a delicacy in Beverly Hills where we come from. <laughs> <laughs> it was until them flies got on it. That was a shady burrito. And I ain't a big fan of eating contests. I was cringing watching these cats eat that stuff. But I'll tell you what. I could use a hundred grand just as much as the next fellow, but I don't know if I'd ate that stuff. Well, they told us the milk was sitting out for like hours before they even got to it. It was all hot and it was oh, skim milk. Oh, that's the, the milk, milk and cookies. cookies. Yeah. 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 It's like, who does that? It was curdling. It's yeah. sick. Yeah. It got got to know, that's though. not nice. I'll tell you what, if, if we get lit up for season four, you guys, I'm going on record as you have my word that I'm going to make sure your catering has fresher food. <laughs> Swing a beer for the working man. Yes. 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 All right. Don't be we're gonna hold, no glory. We're going to hold you to it. We'll be back. <laughs> now, I don't want to get off Candy too fast because she was one of my favorite players. And, uh, you know, we, we take our job real seriously over here at After Buzz and breaking down the show. Absolutely. <laughs> and our job is to deliver the breaking news. And I've got some breaking news on Candy. Oh. No. She has just become officially engaged. Yay! Oh, good with somebody stuff. on the island? No. Oh. no, no. <laughs> so uh, Candy was an, a, an incredible competitor because I honestly thought she got strategy. She knew how to. She made. You know, she was a little too outspoken, which I think caught caught got her in trouble with Misty. Uh, unfortunately, I think Misty didn't care for her being that outspoken. And I she's a great her. actress. Yeah. But you, yeah. and you were a strong Candy supporter in the beginning. Oh yeah, I loved Candy. <laughs> thought, yeah. I thought God. she was going to take it. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it funny, though, last night, on last night's episode, how Bucket, you know, he was so far ahead, and he messed up, and then he said, Candy still was the best guy, right? That Wasn't was it classic. Funny? Candy left a legacy yeah. Yeah. and still yeah. messed yeah. it up for Bucket. It's so That's true. classic. It is so true. Candy came on our show, Steve, uh, not too long ago, and she was uh, emphatic about her position with uh, Bucket. She's just not a fan. Uh, unfortunately. She was fun. She was, she really was fun. fun. Yeah. I enjoyed her. Mm -hmm. She was very candid, very open and honest, and she put it all. She was there to win the money and not make friends and play the game. I mean, yeah. she's yeah. playing to win. Yeah. I, I, and yeah. she was a game competitor, to your point. I have yeah. a question, Steve. Who does the editing on your show? Do you have any, because we're talking about candy, and some of those, you know, going in the little bucket, uh, what is that called, where they take a bath in it, but the, they stick the, to The pixel up huh? thing? Oh, the yes. pixel <laughs> It was very sexy. I mean, it was sexy. The way we saw it with yeah. the water coming down the back and she the little could. short, short skirts. I mean, yeah. it, we were hot. And we were very hot. If you're saying uh, that, yeah, this, this coming from a gay man. <laughs> and I, I had a pretty good view from where I was. <laughs> I mean, do you, do you have anything to do with that? Do you see any of the footage as it's happening or after? Or? No. <laughs> Did they listen to the last show when I was saying, no, 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 when they called in, I said yes. Yeah. No, you know, I, but I, I, had a, I had a real good vantage point uh, to make sure that all the competitors good were job. safe at, during the challenge. Yeah. So uh, I, I observed the same thing you were saying, but live and in living color. So, Beautiful. Uh, and, and, and based on your notes, I'm going to uh, give the editor a tip. Yes, that's right. <laughs> more, more, more of that. More of that. <laughs> more of that. Well, you know, more beauty queens on the show. Um, <laughs> one of the cast favorites was Stacy, even though the editing didn't give us a chance to get to know her really well. The cast absolutely loved her, and yeah. she was actually beside herself when she had to put Brandon's name on a can. I mean, it really tore her up. Mm -hmm. But Bucket never forgave her. Like, to the very end, he held her, like, responsible for that, although everyone is going to eventually have to put someone's name on a can. Right. He, for some reason, couldn't forgive Stacy of that. Um, Mm. We liked her. Did you like her? I like Stacy. She is a gamer. I mean, again, I, it's just hard for me not to like yeah. almost everybody here yeah. on this, uh, this list that uh, Little Egypt Angelina's looking at. <laughs> I could have two worlds here with Angelina. <laughs> I, I like Stacy. She's a gamer. She was a real deal. Mm -hmm. She was, she was uh, authentic and uh, a, a nice country gal. Yeah. Who was, who was your favorite pick from the very beginning, thinking that I would like this person to go home with the money? Do you even do that? I yeah. mean, do you get involved in that? capacity because you're human you want to know well yeah sure I, I never divulge who I would like to see win no. but who I thought would win was Cody based on what he was bringing oh. to the table oh, yeah man. so I can't so I will from, say that so from the beginning you you yeah. were rooting not rooting but you no, just you kind of thought, thought, looking at what everybody's bringing to the table yeah I thought Cody with his athletic ability mm -hmm. uh, as we saw during the you know the elimination or the challenge last mm -hmm. night he was having a hard time putting the, the mental aspect well, together. Well, he almost won. He would yeah. have won, Until yeah. you 
right. in the back. He was yeah. so well, close. He didn't have the things up yeah, there. Exactly. But so he, mental capacity, if it had been a little bit smarter to match his physical attributes, he probably could have won the whole thing. But just from going in and saying, yeah, I think this guy might be able so, to do it. So is it safe to say then you have to be like the Cody package in order for you to be able to know that you're a shoe in for the show to be able to win? Well, no, you know, it's funny because uh, last season, well, yeah, when Wade won, yeah. Wade mm -hmm. was, what, 42 or oh, whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. some, just regular, mm -hmm. non-athletic kind of guy, but weathered the storm. He was kind of the leader of the camp and uh, not a pure athlete, so it, you don't have to be in that cold, Cody mode to, to win the thing. Win and, and as we saw, Jen from season one yep. and uh, Lindsay from you know, Lindsay. This, this season. So this is the second girl. Second, second grade, you got to have some brains to survive Redneck Island. A lot of people don't think that. Yeah. So did did Cody have all of them in order? It just forgot. It, they, were the they can. in the right order? I didn't know if they were in the actual right order. I didn't pay attention without to that. Without, without the cans. Without the cans. Yeah, yeah without the cans. Yeah. The cans up. That, was that cost horrible. Him. Yeah. Totally cost him. Um, B Mart, who was friends with Cody, yeah. uh, which Define I thought. friends. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know, but she apparently they had a real close alliance and it stemmed back from like maybe a quasi uh, friendship prior to the casting. Quasi. Of <laughs> you said quasi on Redneck Island after both. Angelina, hang on a minute. Steve, when you said yeah. that, you do you know something a little bit more? What yeah, we, went on we should know. Yeah. Well, I thought, you, I, I thought they'd uh, hooked up or something. I don't oh, know. They definitely oh. did. That's on the yeah, know that? That's on the editing floor, you guys. No. <laughs> wow. I think I Steve I think Steve has his own little cameras in the camps, separate than what we see. <laughs> that he gets to watch in his own little cabin around the corner. No, that's that believe me, point. when I'm off duty is I'm over there either in the gym or drinking tequila. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know half of nothing that goes on that island. And that's that's the best way to keep it, right? Steve? It is. I know what I need to know and that's all I need. <laughs> Last night was when we got to see the final four go at it. And yep. I don't know, you have been the Misty fan from day oh, one. Oh, from day one. Oh. I was so bummed when they yeah. knocked her, when she knocked her off. Yeah. Oh, my God. The minute that challenge showed up, I knew she was gone. She had a huge disadvantage. There was I, no but, way she was going to win, you know no matter what, who picked what. What, what bothered me the most is how come nobody thought to just turn around? You weren't allowed to look mm. back. But you, are you not allowed to look back? You lose your no. balance. No, look, you don't. You had to run around that diamond mm -hmm. one way, right? Yeah. No. You couldn't stop and turn around and push the <laughs> You could have stood on the little corner. Stone statue. You can't cheat. It. And hopefully. Yeah, you could have slowed down and pushed them back. <laughs> Bent over, sit on well, the little pole. No. What she, what she would, if she would, uh, you know, this is an interesting note for the uh, rednecks that are uh, technology friendly and watch this show. They can, uh, for, for the future seasons, if it gets greenlit, to take a note that you need to pay attention to everything that goes uh, on on the island from a mental aspect. Because when you have to recall all this, you know, they could, she could, she controlled her own destiny. Had she, you know, won the oh the trivia, trivia challenge, contest. yeah, that's so she right. put herself in a bad way by not right. knowing. Of course, you know, Lindsay, probably the smartest person on the island, had it all dialed in. You know, mm -hmm. won the challenge and determined the order. And of course, she went gal on gal, guy versus guy. She she made the right call. So you know, you got to chalk it up to you know mental well, recall. What was the question again that Misty didn't know that it was her? What? How was it worded again? Jacob. It was, her, it was about, about her. It was about her. It was about yeah. her. She, oh, yeah. <laughs> she didn't know. Right. <gasps> about you, knocking the can over. Yeah. Knock, jumping over and knocking it over. That's, she, a, yeah. that's a trick question. Was the first it's about trick. you. You're yeah. not going to think it's you. But she was, a, <laughs> you know, she was, she was a, she was a game competitor. She wasn't the strongest competitor on the island, but everybody. For the most part, liked her. I, I thought she was very charming. I loved her accent, and she hung in there till the yeah. end. And you know, boy, they, once they get on that diamond, it was all over. Uh, was, I thought she was yeah. gonna win. I was so bummed. Well, you know, she had, she was the only player that actually had an alliance with everybody. Yep. I don't think she, yeah. I don't think anyone was in that camp without an alliance to her. So that was right. that was kind of a good strategy. She was just that's quite clever, you know. isn't it? That's quite good. Well, clever. Bucket, yeah. Bucket send her off in the water saying, I love you. Love yeah. you, girl. That was yeah. cute. Yeah. That was yeah. sweet. Yeah, but if she had they kept, um, like, I don't know, maybe Candy or Stacy or one of the other girls in there, um, then she wouldn't have gone against. Like, I think she, Lindsay could have kicked her, but um, uh, Bucket could have kicked her ass. Um, Cody could have done it, too. I mean, it's like you said. She had those people with her to the final four. Catfish. So Snow White could have kicked her butt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, she had, if she had kept one of the um, not as strong, physically strong people on the island, she would have had a better chance. Um, I just think that 
Yes, she did seal her own destiny. But at least, Patrick, you were the only one that was pretty accurate with getting somebody no, from I the said beginning. Bucket. Oh, you changed it. You bucket. changed it. You so she changed, changed it. She changed it. She did change you, cha it. you flip flop no, a lot, no, no. Liz. You changed it. <laughs> no, first show, I like the blonde girl who got me. <laughs> <laughs> but my second choice was Bucket. I can, I can see there's a lot well, going on in there. Well, no, because now, now that I was thinking about the trivia contest, all they were doing was picking their opponents. So exactly. She yeah. still would have been the, the weakest. She still would have been the weakest. Yeah. She was the weakest yeah. competitor yeah. from a physical note on the island. So yeah. I think her, her, her fate was sealed going into that final four with that being the challenge. Exactly. But yeah. she lasted. She lasted she all yeah. the way to the end. Somehow. She wouldn't have needed much sand to be able to get across the little tightrope because yeah. one yeah. one scoop of sand and she would have been <laughs> over. That's all she needed. She's lightweight. <laughs> You know, I, I'm from Texas, but I mean, she has such a southern drawl. I mean, they damn near yeah. need to subtitle everything she said. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that as a compliment to Missy, because I, I loved her accent, and I, I thought she did a, a really, really nice job on the show, and I really liked her. Oh, good, because she really liked you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the big hug. She did, right? <laughs> so anyway, no. then the next okay. question. Is... <laughs> okay, you know what? We were we were talking about uh, Cody and and that he was actually probably pegged to win the whole thing. I did a uh, Facebook poll and I was so surprised that like 90% of the people uh, were pegging Cody to win everything. Wow. And they were really, you know, yeah. really surprised that mm -hmm. Lindsay took it. But everyone was like, I want Cody to win. I want Cody to win. So he, he went over really big with the audience. Well, I that's mean, because everybody it. watched him shower. <laughs> I, mean, that was the thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was like the biggest thing. That between was just, the hair, yeah. water, and then oh, him naked. That did nothing yeah. for me. It he was spinning. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I watched it with my husband who had to keep rewinding it over and over again. <laughs> it was the, other, the other way around. TMI. TMI. Um, okay, so uh, as far as Cody goes, honestly, I thought he played it really safe. I think, uh, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe he was playing it safe because he wasn't real good at strategy. Maybe that was his gameplay. I don't know. Honestly, I think he is the only person on the island who never lied about their oh. um, alliances. Good oh, even right. at the end, Yeah, you're right. Even at the end, he said, no, I'm going to vote for He told Lindsay, I'm going to put your yeah. name on the can. Like, yeah. he was the he only did. one that went all the way through with that kind of mentality. Fair play to him. That's yeah. true, isn't it? Whereas Bucket, I'm just really, I'm sitting here today really <laughs> sad Bucket didn't win. I'm sorry. Really? She, he was going to uh. share some money with her. That was the whole deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, thought, I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw those text messages, Liz. <laughs> well, okay, let's talk about Bucket because clearly he was one of the most edited, you know, contestants. I mean, we saw Bucket through the entire time. Uh, he made really good television. He definitely uh, was a flip-flopper as far as uh, the way he expressed himself, which, you know, I got to tell you, there was a couple times where I thought maybe, uh, you know, he shouldn't be so mean. I thought there was a couple times he was mean. I thought he was mean uh, when Travis came back from an elimination. I thought Candy. he was mean. Rick, he, what Who he, was our guest that said that he was Candy. a little bit Candy. mean? Candy. Candy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It said he was mean. And I think she said, I don't like him. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think, I think she right. said another word. I, I, I think, think she said another. Um, so, I think you're right. so, but with but with that, you know, I did uh, come around the last episode when he called home. Oh, me too. That yeah. phone call. You know when he made that call home? I, yeah. I, I, I what, what did he <laughs> say? Hang on. What did he say? I hear the birds. Chip it, chirping and I hear the water, yeah. but nothing's as nice as hearing my voice, my the voice most beautiful, voice, right? something like most that. beautiful sound oh. is my wife's I voice. I thought that phone call was hilarious because he's going off on this romantic tangent and uh, <laughs> uh, like, oh, I can't, I love you, I miss you, and, and I just keep hearing his wife. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she, she didn't say much, did she? Yeah, she didn't say much. I was like, he is like. <laughs> Breaking news. Being a part right now. But, but you know, yeah. with the phone calls, wasn't it interesting? Lindsay was last to do a phone call. But did you notice that Lindsay was the only one that was really, I mean, obviously, she, they were all emotional. But did you notice she was the one that was focused? And even her mum mm -hmm. said, win, win, win. Very, yes. Yes. Very calculating. I, yes. I mean, yeah. unfortunately, I watched the show, and Patrick over there had already texted me who won. So unfortunately, <laughs> I couldn't live the whole episode and see what's going to happen. I was just watching Lindsay the whole time. <laughs> it's on T though, you can go and relive the experience. <laughs> so I have then. a question I have a question for Steve. I protected you in, in week number six, I think it was Travis. That because when he called us, he said that he had a little tiff 
with you. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the right word is when he was walking out. Tiff, let's call it Tiff. Because he said <laughs> he said something really derogatory against you and said that oh, what, who does he think he is and what does he think he's gonna do and blah blah blah. He's God. And I told him <laughs> and I told him I said why are you being so disrespectful to somebody who put you on the show, who was there for you, who gave you all the opportunities for you to be able to even play your guitar right now and tell us about it on iTunes. He's just about losing. So yeah, yeah he mm -hmm. was he really because he said everything was very misconstrued. Was it really like that? I want to hear it from you. Because the way he portrayed it, he said he's playing a character. Yeah. And we know that doesn't happen very much. I think every day when he looks in the mirror, that's, a, that's the character he's playing. I think yeah, that's, see, there you go. that's what I said. No, there was a come to Jesus meeting with myself and Travis, which was not aired. And if you were to see that, you would see the fear of God in that man's eyes. <laughs> Love it. And that's all I will say about it, that. Because yeah. everybody, because everybody, everybody said otherwise, and they said he was horrible. They didn't like him. He was worse yeah. than what they oh, portrayed. Yeah. And yeah, and any time you get a story, as you well know, I mean, you go, you always have to consider the source. Of course. So you can see course. where his story is coming from and, and what the rest of the cast thought about him. Yeah, yeah. What I just said, and, and I'll leave it at that. So. Uh, I, I, with all that being said, I always, when we go into any one of these seasons, and hopefully we go into season four, I want to lead these guys into a, a great season that they have a lot of fun. They're in yeah. a competitive environment. Yeah. We get good entertaining TV, and they each get a fair shot at 100 grand. So, mm -hmm. to, with that being said, I wish Travis all the luck in the world and whatever he's doing, and that's all I got to say about that all cat. Right. And, <laughs> and on, on, a, on a lighter note, you know, they, your cast really has the largest amount of respect for you. And they all really just like worship the ground you walk. Well, I think so everybody does. We do. Everybody well, we yeah, had a good time though. You know, yeah. we, we we showed up, and you know, it's all it sounds like a good time to go down to Mexico and be you know in Mexico for a month. But it's hotter than hell. It's sunny. You're yeah. in the water, <laughs> and you're, you're competitive, yeah. and you're you're Tell getting mic'd and de mic'd, and they're trying to take a bathroom break, do this that, or you know, it's a busy day, and in reality, at the at the place, uh, twenty four seven. So they're working their asses off, no doubt. But the bottom, the bottom line is, we want everybody to have fun, treat everybody with respect, and and give them a fair shake at 100 G's, and that's what the show's if, about. If so. we bring a six pack, can we come over to your place later in Mexico? Because <laughs> we need a little vacation. After you got the beer, I got the time. <laughs> I would love to see Paul after a few challenges. Yeah, let's, let's get him climbing, and yeah, you no, be Liz, you want to see him after one challenge? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the finale. Let's talk about how that played out. This was probably the uh, best reckoning ever. Best challenge. Oh my gosh. Best finale challenge. Yeah. That was cool. Well Good. done. Well Brains, done. Brains, physical, everything. And, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, and don't from you think the start. it should yeah. be? I mean, don't you think it really, for the winner, should have to go through the paces and be tested at every level like well, that? Yeah. I guess Lindsay, grand. Lindsay at one point really thought she had no chance of winning, right? Yeah, oh, that exactly. was the God. best thing of it is, you know, you love, whatever TV show you watch, you always love seeing the under, underdog come through and win, don't you? Yeah. That's what is so exciting yeah. about everything. Anybody can win anything at any moment and never give in. And Lindsay being last, you know, halfway through that challenge, she really could have said, you know what? I'm not going to win anyway. Are Which we? most people would. Most people would throw a towel in or just say, forget it. Well, she didn't. Two Good weeks ago, it. she was going to be voted off, and she stayed there, and she challenged the person that kept her there, okay. which is then the person that she beats at the end, which yeah. was the ultimate, yeah. I right. think. But right. I think she I knew think. that was going to happen. She knew she would go up against Bucket at the end. Well, I think. I, just like Steve said, I mean, you never know. I mean, Cody was the front runner from what it seemed like, but then one stupid mistake, and without all that heat, anything's possible. You don't know. Mm -hmm. it, it was interesting because I was live tweeting last night and you had a lot of people pulling for Lindsay and Bucket had a lot of fans because you know people just want to see <laughs> yeah, Bucket where that money yeah. pay some bills and you know because everybody kind of expected Cody to win because of physicality. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, so it, it, it shook out very interesting and of course, you know, I, I knew the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> tweeting accordingly and reading the tweets and I'm thinking, oh, these people are really invested in, in these, in these uh, yeah. I don't want to say characters, they're really invested in these the people. people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you know, it captured the hearts of a lot of people uh, that yeah. were watching the show. So are you saying, Steve, that the general audience don't want necessarily the clear, obvious, stereotypical winner like Cody to win? They do want an underdog, or they want mm. 
Do you think that's well? You know, Liz, I think it's I think it's about everything. Everybody wants to see a good story. Everybody wants to see a good fight. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to see a good competition. So I, you're going to have the ups and downs, and yeah, you know, some things, twists and turns you don't see, see coming. So I think as long as it's good TV and you can invest in somebody, you know, I think you, I don't you think, stay tuned. I don't think people were going to be upset if Cody won. I think it's just the way it happened. You're just kind of you feel bad actually for the fact yeah. that he didn't win for yeah. something so minor. Well, like, well, the yeah. great thing about the oh. show is that they themselves win. And a lot yeah. of reality shows yeah. nowadays are down to the audience phone voting, especially in the UK, right? right. UK is all about phone votes and who Why you like is the most. That? Money. <laughs> 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 and what I love about this show is if it had been an audience participation show, it would have been a very different show. This yeah. is purely about the rednecks proving how strong, how tough. You know how much of a winner are they and right. that is what i think i love as an audience because you're watching the journey you're seeing you know you're just seeing how they pull through the difficult moments the difficult challenges and hats off to lindsay well done well really done. Pre really pleased for the girl didn't she didn't she have her head in the game the entire time yeah. i mean yeah. she was she Determined. was the best obviously i, I the best don't game yeah. i don't know i think that there was some that one time no 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 at the, at the start so when when the whole competition started yeah. um i thought oh wow guys have major advantage shoveling dirt shoveling sand oh. into a, a, mm -hmm. a card they'll go much faster but Lindsay weighed a lot less than those guys and i think if i think they were over putting more sand in than they think they needed. If if Lindsay had been smart, which obviously she did win the challenge, but um, I think she could have probably gotten a little bit farther ahead if she had realized she did not really need as much sand as I think. It's she, kind of a risky move did. on her part if she did. That was one of those things where it better be safe than sorry because if yeah. you go in a right. drink, you're right. in yeah, trouble. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. But I also think Cody he kind of had brain challenges because even like with the the putting the words together, yeah, the, the clue, puzzle. he yeah. didn't get that, yeah. and then he totally well, forgot to put the beer cans up. But so. Patrick, Cody said the two <laughs> most things, the two most important things that he's bad at is right. a blonde girl <laughs> and a puzzle. Yes. I mean, he was doomed. <laughs> well, uh, he uh, was doomed. Uh, uh, yeah. blonde, uh, blonde, attractive women with yeah. improper morals. <laughs> improper yes. Oh, yeah. not Liz. <laughs> no, no, we were talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about Patrick then. You know, you know, Enough I was going to say, yeah. like, the, the most impressive thing in that challenge for me Oh, like was watching Lindsay get hit by that wave, because her. Oh yeah. I mean, have like, I've been hit by a wave. Uh, I've been hit by a wave, and it knocks you out. I mean, when it's coming from behind you, um, and it just pushes you forward. She got disoriented. Did you see how she was shaking and her legs were? Yeah. I mean, she she didn't even know where the cooler was she when she popped it. it. Yeah, she yeah. did, like, didn't she? Is I that love... is that the Pacific? O ocean? Where is that part? The, the way that, that, that was the Pacific. Because those waves are brutal. I've been to Mexico. And the, I, I saw that, and I went yeah. like, oh, my God. How is yeah. she going to swim through that? And then she oh, like, trying, she's trying to run, and she barely put her foot in front of the other. Yeah. Did you my see vantage, that? Yeah, my vantage point from on the day when we were they were in the contest, you know, I was about... 200 yards away looking uh -huh. through binoculars. I didn't know, you know, oh, she, yeah. she got knocked for a loop oh, until I saw oh. the episode last night and she right. was totally disoriented, uh, working off instincts and just thinking, go for it, don't quit, keep, you must survive, and she did. But she did. When you watched here. that, were you like more impressed with Lindsay when you saw her? Well, I was impressed with her from the get go. You yeah. could see that, man, mentally, this this chick was, she's super sharp and a gamer. You know, yeah. she, she got smoked oh by Woodle in the, uh, to right. the tug-of-war thing, but, I mean, everybody knew that Lindsay was one of the strongest females, if not, well, between her and Woodle, the, the strongest on the island. Do you yeah. remember when she ate the eye of the crab last oh, week? Oh, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. And I said, that's it. I've seen determination and a winner in that like, moment. Mm, yum, yum. And you said uh, you wouldn't do that. No, no, anything with eating. I don't think yeah. I would either. I saw those people eating those sand crabs the other day, and I'm like, what in the hell? I'd do it. I totally Good would do it. For a million dollars? I would. I would totally do it. A million, yes. And a million. For Even a hundred thousand, yeah. I'd do it. I mean, come on, man. I mean, no. Yeah. Hundred thousand. Well, that doesn't pay gas. The only food they got though is beans and like an oatmeal like spam. thing. Yeah. yeah so. They had a spam They're fight. They're probably like. Oh, um, <laughs> they had a spam fight during their off time. Yeah. They were like playing golf with the spam. I mean, how much spam gets there? Like. Two cases of spam to get them through, like. Weeks well, and I months. shipped it in prior. I knew that they were going to be starving and needed nutrition. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that the sand crabs I, bu I brought in were going to be eaten. <laughs> cannibalized. Are you guys going to increase the prize money ne now next season when you guys go forward? No, because then I won't get paid as much. <laughs>
<laughs> Steve, I got a question for you. When Lindsay won last night, and obviously the cameras are switched off, how well did Cody and Bucket take it? Were were they okay? Do you do you have a therapist that comes on as well? <laughs> Man, I tell you what, they were both uh, obviously let down to a very yeah, high degree. I'm sure. I mean, it, it was it was so close between either one of them. And both of them thought they won. And Man. guys, so they were heartbroken, but they were genuinely as happy for Lindsay as anybody could be. They lost fair and square. She was a gamer. She beat them. It was what it was. They had the opportunity, but but make no mistake about it, they were heartbroken. Yeah. When when they leave, when they leave the uh, leave the island, do they go like immediately? Like when Misty got eliminated, did she go right away, or do they like stay a day, or do they? Well, I mean, yeah, they you're just, gonna stay about gonna... a day because we got a line to fly it up and okay. get them down to the airport. So okay. you know that is what it is. I mean, we're we're pretty remote out there where we're at. And then they're just gone after they're that. Gone oh. like a wind. But they are <laughs> they are separated, right? They're separated from the camp. So even though they've got to wait maybe 24 hours for their flight, they still. No. Mm, not allowed to. Oh no no, they're done. No, they're not talking to anybody. Crowd. Yep. Wow. What happened? What happened the night, um, the end of the show when Lindsay won? What did you guys do then? Did you all like have a drink? Did you have a meal? Barbecue. Or? Tequila. Well, we had a couple of beers there on the <laughs> island. <laughs> but, but then I was flying home the next day. Now oh, the, the uh, crew was all going to get together and do the after party. You know the wrap. Yeah. Right. The wrap party. And uh, man, I heard it was across the, uh, the the river and to the other part of Mexico. And mm. man, when it and when it involves getting on a boat to go to a different location to go party. I'm not down with that, so I don't know what everybody else did. I took my ass to my room, packed up all my bags, had a couple of beers, and went to bed because I was ready to come back to the United States of America. Woo and tell yes. me, Steve, another question I got. What's the security like? Because obviously the locals must want to kind of see what you're filming on the beach. What's the security? They probably can't even get to it. No, I mean, we were we filmed right outside of a little vid village there in Manzanilla. Oh. And it was just, no, the, the people there are so nice. It's unbelievable. Oh. So, I mean, every now and then you get some boats cruising by. It, it, it was funny because we were doing the one, uh, the, di the diamond when they run around the, the Oh, yeah, yeah. And these people would come by in these boats pulling those long banana gimmicks with about 12 people. <laughs> And of Love course, it. that made for some great jokes uh, as they drove by. But then one of them just parked out there, and they're, they're right there on camera. We're like, Love it. <laughs> I, I gotta watch my language. That's why I'm minding this. But it was like, get that you SOB do, out of here. You can do sign language. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> What about to answer your question, the people over there were absolutely yeah. wonderful. I love going right. to Mexico. What about sharks? Because I know that area has got sharks. That's right? why I never it's went really to water. Known for sharks. That's why I never went to you water. You never did? No. Oh my God. I fell in water last season. We've already talked about that. But you know the contestants out there, the yeah. water that we were in. Practically, I mean, you had to go out there and put millions of gallons of chum mm -hmm. to get, you know, bitten by a shark. So, so what he's trying to say is, you sign up for Redneck Island. You, we put you in shark infested water. <laughs> we, we we make you work overtime. It's hot, and then at the end of the day, we may, we give you a couple of beers, hot in between, and then at the end of the day, we may give you a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Correct. And then when it comes out on TV, we get to laugh our asses off and enjoy the process. It's a win-win situation. Right. No one has died yet during the filming of Redneck Island. That's yeah. the bottom line. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of miss the old Steve meal though from uh, season two where they had to swim out into the water which it would have been great if there were like sharks jumping while they were doing all that like to go get Steve meal. I wouldn't have allowed that to happen. I actually want one of those bottles with your mail. Did you handwrite those notes? Of course I did. <laughs> I would sit up and <laughs> I would sit in my room for hours with a calligraphy yes. pen. Right, and y'all didn't even know I knew what calligraphy was. Yeah. We just learned something worth the day here. Your handwriting, oh, after bus. your handwriting was great. Exquisite. Perfect. It changes from season to season. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, I'll probably write them left-handed <laughs> just to change it up a little bit. Right. We'll be watching uh, for sure. I might write next year's in Morse code. <laughs> So uh, so he sings the Redneck theme song. Right, he right. writes his messages. I'm still waiting for the day that that bottle shows up and there's a note that says, you have no messages. That's what I want to see. I want to see, like, you know, look it, on their face. They wouldn't know to crap or wine to watch. <laughs> <laughs> what do I, we do now? Right. I, I want to go on Redneck Island and, and do oh. the challenges. Oh, God. <laughs>
<laughs> we, we need plenty of test people to come out and test these gimmicks. They've already asked me I if I did them. I don't do them. So you want to come out and test the, the things? Come on out. I, I do. I can do I have to be an authentic redneck? Because I'm no, not. No, see, but that's the thing about it. Okay, so that leads me to a question. You guys, clearly, everybody in this room is not really what I would think would be the redneck island. Well, he is, apparently. Thing. I didn't even know it, Steve. He is. But y'all have been watching the whole season. Yes. And, and y'all, yes. so, so you don't have to be a redneck to, to enjoy the show. Did you enjoy the show? I love the show. What did you like about it? I love the way you handle each and every single person, the way you did. And then, because when they go back, it was only focused around you. And I could see the nucleus being a very strong individual that gave them their tasks. And then let them, and, and then you kind of just unleash them and see what happens. And that was amazing to me. Because the way they see you and to make sure that they don't do anything wrong or they don't do anything, because they have to face you the next day, or they're going to have to face you for a challenge. And they were more afraid of that than anything else, I think. Liz, what did you enjoy about this season? I love the ups and downs, the roller coaster. One minute you're investing your time in one character, and then the next you kind of learn about another one, and then they phone home, and the, you know how they get on with each other. I just also like how fair and honest it is. You know, you literally have to live on your own devices, and you've got to be good, and you've got to be a survivor and strong, and use your brain. It, right. it tests every part of your body. I have a lot of uh, Twitter followers that are in the UK, and people are clamoring over there for Redneck Island. Do you think people in the UK would enjoy Redneck Island? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> there are certain parts of the UK that are a little bit more redneck, I like know. where I'm from. Uh, well, 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 let's get the Valley's people on there. It would be brilliant. You're definitely going to need subtitles because we can barely understand her. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you enjoy about the show? I love the challenges. I just love watching the creative challenges and all, how the, the, con, the contestants competing against each other and battling it out, and I'm like cheering them on, who's going to go, and it's cool. Well, I, what other reality television shows do you watch? Survivor, Amazing Race, like everything where like there's you know the the grand prize at the right. end. So this held up to those shows. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's yeah. awesome. That's good to hear. Catfish, talk to me. <laughs> catfish with a name like Catfish, you got to stay away from hooks and nets. <laughs> catfish, what'd you think about this season? Um, I completely agreed with Liz. I love the development and character. Um, you kind of go into the show not really knowing who they are, and and it's just what I love so much more about Redneck Island than Survivor, and it, and I think it's that redneck culture. They open up to each other. They really aren't creating a shell. They're not hiding. I mean, there is some gameplay, but they're not, like, trying to s purposely stab people in the back, like, pretending someone else. They really do go instantly from a static character to a dynamic character, like from the first episode. And I just love that. I love how open they are. Well, that's interesting. Angelina, you come from the streets. You come from the city. <laughs> In the world, there is no pity. Bam, bam, it's a wrestling jam. Come on, ladies, give us a hand. That's an inside joke between me and Ellie here. <laughs> Angelina, what did you enjoy about this season? Because, you know, knowing you like I, I, we don't know each other very well, but I wouldn't just think that you would be a Redneck Island demographic type person. Well, I'll tell you what, I've been watching since season one. Yep. I have been a fan of Redneck Island from the get-go. And what hooked me and what hooked my family was... Um, the casting, actually. We've watched Survivor for 10 years, and it was just a fun way to watch people play out these challenges authentically, keeping within like who they are, like you were saying, Jacob, mm -hmm. as a person. Um, I got to fall in love with these people with Survivor. I don't feel that way because it's so manipulative and it's so yeah. backstabbing that I want to engage. When I'm watching TV, I want to engage. I want to root for someone. I want to I want to see people flying in the air screaming. That, <laughs> that goes over big with me but, whenever you launch people. And, and I, I didn't want to, to take over and host the show, but to your point, you just, uh -huh. as far as it being engaged and, yeah. and, and learning the, the who these people are, when I first showed up and I've seen these people for the first time, I'm like, mm, these people are a little bit different because this was a younger crowd than we had on the first two mm -hmm. seasons. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, I, you know, I don't know if I'm getting these cats too much. I'm not feeling them yet. Obviously, they grew on me big time yeah. uh, in, in a real fast uh, uh, way. But I, I enjoyed identifying with them and seeing what they're all about, what they're made of, who they are, and how they compete. You know, this was uh, the casting in season three was a little different than the casting in one and two, where I saw a younger group of people. They were younger. Uh, more athletic, more fit. Um, I would like to see more Woodles 
personally because she's so dynamic as yeah. a character. I'm like, I'm not interested if you're fit and you can do these challenges. I'm interested in who you are, and I just want to engage with. And maybe a little older too. Why don't we have a fifty? They did. Yeah, they did in yeah. season one. Forty-two yeah, was the well, oldest. Well, was forty-two. Right? Right? Forty-two. Yeah, and Wade yeah. was forty when he won season two. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Oh, and you know one more thing too. I forgot. Hmm. Growing up, my dad used to drink beer every single day. Came from that kind of family. Right. And so I love to every challenge. It's beer. <laughs> Everything is involved with beer. I just kept remembering. That's my childhood. Oh, <laughs> Where'd you grow up? Uh, uh, Orange County. But okay. my dad, very, macho you know, beer. yeah, very macho yeah. guy. Wasn't it funny in last night's show how Bucket was the one to wake everybody up by opening well, a can? Like, is that your strategy? Get everyone drunk? Right? Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, that goes back to how Cody woke up with a hangover and Lindsay woke up with uh, sleep deprived yep. because of the actual realizing, hey, I'm about to take all of this month of doing this challenge on one day to determine if I get that. I, I have so. learned a lot about the uh, redneck culture. I really, <laughs> really like, have. What do you mean? Well, because even within the rednecks on the island, one redneck was a superior redneck in comparison to another and said, you know what, I don't have to hunt. My dad does the hunting. I just do the killing and the, the cleaning and the skinning and the, and the frying. I'm like, oh my God, they had little stages. I'm like, Jesus, I could not do any of it. So there's a pecking order, but you're saying. But there's uh, an order, order within them. themselves. Yeah. And it was interesting mm -hmm. to see that even within them, I mean, in Beverly Hills, the jungle that we come from, we have our own order. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea jungle, that yeah. the rednecks had their own. And I'm like, God, it's the same everywhere. You know, I, compl I completely agree with Paul, and I love learning more about redneck culture. I mean, I come yeah. from the city. I come from Las Vegas. Not oh, I thought you were really going to do the rap. I come yeah, from I the city. Oh, going there. Come, come over to my parents' house. I thought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, um, you know, I was born and raised in Vegas. I, whenever I go visit places, it's other cities, Europe, all that stuff. And, you know, sometimes I honestly forget, you know, back when this great country was founded, 1776, um... You know, we had beer on the table. We, had beer, we, <laughs> we were pretty redneck compared to England. And uh, wait, are you yes, redneck? You are. You're not redneck. <laughs> are you? Are you considered redneck? Yeah. Are you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. like 100 percent. Like, is that mother father redneck kind of? Well, situation? you know, like when I think, you know, when, when, when I think redneck, I think just a person who lives or loves the outdoor lifestyle, I which see. I do. Man, I okay. hunt, I fish, I grew up uh, RVing with my mom and dad. I've been hunting since I was six, seven years old. So and, wow. and fishing since that same age, lifelong. You know, uh, then you know through my years in wrestling and everything else. You know, I've got to experience a lot of other things. But who and what I am is exactly you know exactly where, where, where this is. cast is from. So you could mm -hmm. appreciate all the stuff that they're doing and, oh, and relate to it. Oh yeah, you know, man, I, I grew up and like I've told everybody, I specialize in manual labor. So here's know. my here's my question for somebody like me. Yep. Cool. Do they do a good job translating the redneck culture so that I am profoundly watching it and connecting with it? Properly? I think they are. I, yeah, yes, because I think these people are being exactly who and what they are. And when they're casting these cats, I mean, they're looking high and low, and they're looking for posers. So you know, oh. you get a lot of people who just want to be on TV, oh, right. yeah. and they'll sort through that. And you've got to go through interview process after process, and Skype, and, and all the other stuff. To make sure you were tried and true, and this is no BS. It's yeah, not out. I don't have a. I don't have a chance in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, did they, did you know what though? But it'd be a great. It'd be a great tell of television. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try out. I'm gonna tell them you said so. <laughs> you yeah, you gotta get a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, are there any um, physical tests or medical tests they've got to pass first, the contestants? Psychological. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, pretty much anything on TV, you got you got to uh, pass a psych. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they got to do the medical and all those. Not stuff. allowed to be afraid of anything. You know, let's let's. Um, yeah, you can. You can't have any fear. I after Lindsay won, I went back online and I looked at her bio because I was so impressed with her. And it, you know, I I, I re remembered that she was 29 years old. That mm -hmm. she was a former correctional officer. Oh uh, yes. We brought that up the first yeah, time. Didn't yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And so I'm like thinking, ah, this is a smart lady. Um, how redneck is she? She talks a lot about hunting and fishing, but when I saw her, I thought maybe out of all of them, she seemed the least redneck. Well, with that being said, uh, just your your level of redneckicity. <laughs> <laughs> 
does, newer. Does, does not mean that you cannot be refined, highly intelligent, and polished. Right. Rednecks I mean, have look at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. What are we doing? So, yeah, I mean, no, you know, so no, she, she's she's very smart, very well, well spoken, yeah. articulate, eloquent, all that stuff. And and uh, you know, when I looked at her background, because I, you know, when yeah. I everybody comes to the island, I look to see what everybody does. And I'm thinking, okay, now this this young lady's going to have a mental advantage just because of what she does for a living. Do she, she did so good at the puzzle. Yeah. What does she want to do with the money? Exactly. I, I, I forgot she what she wanted to do. She didn't say, oh, right? She wants to buy a double wide, right? Oh, was she a double wide? <laughs> double wide. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Is she the double wide? Everyone wanted a double oh, wide. Oh my god. No, oh, somebody wanted the bar. No. <laughs> you did not just say that. No. Yes, I did. <laughs> she wants wild. a pink one. Oh, my god. I am uh, I am shocked, <laughs> bewildered, and flabbergasted that you guys are laughing at that. Oh my god. Winner of season two oh. wanted to add on to his double wide. <laughs> It's a redneck. I have a, I have a double wide, and I also have a triple wide in Texas. I have all these things, but 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 see what I always but whatever they do with the money, I always tell them. I said, no, check it out. You're gonna get a hundred grand, but they're not taking taxes out, so you must pay those taxes. Don't right. forget to pay Uncle Sam because he's got his hand out and he wants his percentage. So, so I so I, they actually get twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> the way it's working right now, damn near. So, so, but I, so no problem with the double white because that's what it's gonna take. I, but I always give them that speech. I said, you know, I I, I know guys yeah. that blow through a lot yeah. more money than this yeah. real easy. Where they blew it up their nose or whatever, didn't yeah. Uncle Sam? You can really blow that money quickly. So I always give them that one little tidbit of information mm -hmm. that I try to give them. Pay your taxes, enjoy the rest, do whatever you can with it. Mm. Say, it at anything, wide. put it in the bank. That's interesting. Like that, that that's not my dream to buy a double wide. But that's you ain't a redneck. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it ain't your dream. Okay. Well, you know, uh, I, I didn't know that the prize is actually awarded after the finale. I, I, I didn't know like the the background of like how game shows work. But it makes sense because had she had won the hundred, she might have been in her double wide, and then it would have been out. Yeah, you know, but I do. But I do have a question. Is it like American Idol and uh, America's Got Talent, where years. you win a million dollars over forty years? <laughs> <laughs> Is that how that works? Yeah. Forty-year oh, payout. Oh, know that. Yes. Oh, it's in increments of two dollars yeah. and fifty-eight cents. It's over forty years the payout <laughs> oh, for the winner God. of America's yeah. Got oh, Talent, God. American Idol. I have <laughs> no idea. That's why Redneck Irony is so special. We cut you a hundred thousand dollar check as soon as it's time to cut you that check. You pay Uncle Sam. The rest is on you. Oh my oh, God, that's oh, great. That's really cool. Well, I want to go. I want to go to the grand opening of this double wide. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see it too. Is it a housewarming? Uh, what do you call it? A double wide warming. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? I, I don't know what to take. D W W. You take a six pack of beer. Bring a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> You'll fit right in. <laughs> I do have oh a um, quick question, though, actually, about the challenge, which has been driving me up a wall. Um, at the puzzle. Hold on. Catfish with a dilemma. Put <laughs> 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 that drive in there. Okay, go, catfish. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> um, when, when they're reading the puzzle, they're supposed to say it out loud. Um, but they're right next to each other. If I, if I was them and I, I heard Bucket say the puzzle, i go, thank you. Then I know how to put it and together. Put it down, yeah. That sounds good, just from a listening standpoint. Talking here, you know, yeah. on the After Buzz show. But you must read those directions clearly out loud to yourself, so that you understand them correctly. It's 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 your Otis. So, so they can't know. hear. Yeah, they, they they if you know if she's reading directions, I'm right next to her. I can listen, but I need to make sure that I, uh, you know, absorb all of that information myself rather than rely on her. Because theoretically, I could have a different set of directions. Uh, so if I'm just doing oh, monkey see, monkey do, or whatever, oh. I could be doing something completely wrong. They are instructed to read the directions out loud so that they understand the tasks that we are giving them. Oh, I, guess, wow. I guess I would be the only one that would turn around and push somebody off and say, pick up all the yellow cans out of the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you see, would, I would be the, theoretically, 
you could do that. Totally I would would. be that person. <laughs> you know what? Speak? I like the way you yeah. could be. I like that. You know what, Paul? You brought up a really good point because swear I thought that I thought the game changed in that tub when Lindsay yeah. realized she that was, it was a red can. Smock were, oh, I wouldn't have yeah. realized that. So quick, man. Wow, that was so good. quick. Again, I was watching from 200 Red. yards away, and I couldn't read her lips with my binoculars. And so when I was watching last night, I was just like, that's badass. <laughs> <laughs> but, surprisingly, cool but surprisingly, Cody figured it out pretty quick, too, yeah. that it was oh, yeah. all the camp. I was, I was shocked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but Cody may have seen Lindsay do it. Oh, maybe, I felt yeah. sorry for Bucket. He had like a... <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Yeah, like, Bucket, <laughs> Bucket was taking it out and putting the right ones in the, the cooler. So that's why they were out. So he doesn't have to go looking, searching again. And Bucket, uh, bless his heart, I don't think he was the smartest cat on the island. <laughs> but he was damn sure quote worthy. Yeah. There were so many oh Bucket quotes. God. I yeah. mean, that guy was gold when it came time to just some sound bites. That's why yeah. he was my favorite. I loved him. You know what? Bless him. Speaking of quotes, I love I love when Steve feeds me a line like that. Um, some of the best quotes came from Lindsay last night. I was so proud of her because she was so overwhelmed with the fact that she was the only girl against these guys. I mean, it really took her, like, it was so important for her yeah. when she won that to, to reiterate how much that and it was two strongest them. guys, she yeah, said. Yeah. yeah. So here's a quote from her. She says, I might be a girl and they might be stronger than me, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're tougher than me. And I'm like, wow. I love the way her mind thinks because mm -hmm. she was she was really invested uh, in be, doing the very best she could. And she had said when she won the $100,000 that it's not a, it doesn't feel as good as the fact that she got to be Bucket and Cody. Right. Remember that? Well, her her mm -hmm. mission initially yeah. was before she, they even went to the game the night before. She said it's it's really nice to know that I'm here with two strong players mm -hmm. and it's going to be even better when I win and I beat two boys in in, in the game. And that that was meaningful to her. It was interesting. I mean, she's a gamer, and she she you know, everybody was there to win, but she really uh, was focused. I went there and hung out with them as it showed there, uh, you know, last on last night's episode, and I went with the jar moonshine, some beer, yeah. and <laughs> they all had a little bit to drink, and she probably had you know barely barely because yeah. she was thinking. Mm -hmm. Hey, right. next let day we're drunk. going for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't don't yeah. let those guys get hammered, That's and smart. I'm gonna maintain and chill. Well, Steve, because Cody think, did say he woke up with a little bit of a. Do you uh, think that um, in any aspect, when I remember when you know I was a beauty queen and a winner, you know I was always taught you cruise around in fourth gear, but when you're competing, you find your fifth gear, right? Do you think that winning a challenge like Redneck Island or winning the whole show, do you think that it's a psychological? You've got to be prepared to be the winner. And I felt watching Bucket, he had a head start with everybody, putting the cans up and the photos up. But I felt like there was a psychological barrier that he couldn't push through to be that winner. There was something that was messing up in his brain. That's how I saw it. Well, I think that just goes with the pressure of being in the heat of battle and why some people succeed right. and others yeah. don't. And he yeah. was Big that time. other that yeah. didn't. Yeah. Yeah. He wow. couldn't over overcome that task at, uh, at hand. And that's why he didn't win. So I mean, I think is, to your it, point, it is at the end you got to push through to be that winner. And they're trying so hard, yeah. and, and you know, and, and it was a close race and battle. And he was just man, you know, when you really think about some of these people that you see on some of these television shows, you think, man, in the moment, and, and you hear some of these people with these dumb answers that they come up with every night. Yeah. Win from well, within. Well, check it out. Check it out. Here's the, Win from uh, no, but Liz, check it out. Beauty contest. Yeah. You remember the, the the young lady who had a real bad answer a couple of months ago? Oh my God, she lost. So oh, yeah. Miss America. But remember what she was? Yeah. yeah, it was just bad what she said because yeah. she was so confused and flabbergasted by the yeah. whole process. She didn't know where to crap or wind or why and came up with that ridiculous <laughs> yeah. answer. And, of course, she made the rounds so she could, you know, make up, you know, what she said. But it would, it would be a moment like that, I guess, is the best way to explain yeah, it to you. Yeah, when you're on the pressure, can you psychologically come through and win? From right. within the inside game in your own head. Right. You know, it's funny that you should say that because Cody actually said that last night. He said, the only one that can beat me is me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like prophesized that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Lindsay, all the way through, was saying the word win, win. Do you know what I mean? For me, the, yeah. they, there was a connection yeah. with it. She's she saw it, yeah. Were you excited that they were cleaning their space because you were going to come over for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so cute. That was they so were cute. like, they were like, well, Steve, well, come I mean, But you got to understand, I mean, I built those two shacks with my own two hands. <laughs> <laughs> While you were writing the yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. In between. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I, th I think it made for uh, and made for compelling TV to actually see somebody cleaning up. <laughs> <laughs> and did you see they they made the girl do it while they were drinking? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was, she was sweeping. She was sweeping while they were hanging out. Yeah. What? But those were guys. Guys are stupid. <laughs> guys don't care. They, you know, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like I'm married to a clean freak. You know, but, <laughs> I, and I like to be clean too. But to a yeah. point, you know, I, I'll get everything all organized, and then it'll all go to hell. And then it's like a month or two, you know. <laughs> Then I'll clean it back up, and it'll all go to hell. Now with my wife, everything's got to be Mr. Clean yeah. over there. We call it ADD, ADHD, KFC, JAK. Everything else. else. About the kitchen sink. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we just call it in Are you an organization freak? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I wish I could have a little bit more of that, but I, I'm I mean, look do. at me. Yeah. No, 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 I no, wake no. up looking Hang like on. this, Steve. <laughs> I watched interior therapy with these guys on, oh and one God. of my friends called you a hoarder. So <laughs> <laughs> it was all make believe. The sledgehammer was a make believe. Oh. <laughs> so, okay, so we have a really uh, unique position here right now, you guys. I mean, we're here with the executive producer of Redneck Island. Stop, if, stop they're, if they're green lighting, if they're green lighting uh, for season four. Is there anything you want to see different? I'm auditioning already. What do you mean? If there's <laughs> That's a great far? question. I'm sitting here with a panel of experts who've been oh. watching the season. So what would you guys like to see different that we didn't do this year or the seasons past? Ooh. I want to see me on it. <laughs> well, I'm telling you. <laughs> you know what? We've got to put you in touch with a great acting coach <laughs> so you can learn to act like a redneck. Okay. <laughs> I live with one. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what I, I think would be really cool is I've, I've seen, I really, first of all, kudos to having bathrooms there and, a, you know, oh. a bar, right, and beds oh. to sleep on. I mean, I'm glad we're not Those watching these beds? people. <laughs> Well, they're better than what Survivor had, what they were offering oh, yeah. there. In Survivor, you made your own. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. but in Survivor, you get a yeah. million dollars. You don't get 100000 Over 40 years. Well, you have <laughs> <laughs> You want 100 money. grand now? Oh, oh, thinking that you could hit me hit by a car tomorrow? <laughs> or a million over 40 years? A bird in a handle, two in the bush. I, that's, that's, what that's, what right. Right. that's right. That's right. That's right. So I think for me, I would like to see, I, I think your challenges, they're getting, uh, they're getting getting more exciting each year and I say don't stop continue to throw launch people from catapults continue to get them doing things that we want to do in our own backyard so when we were growing up I, but we couldn't I would like to see more color if that makes sense. Color? No, because see, the jungle's very green. <laughs> and everything you guys use is just natural color of the wood. Oh, right. It's called camouflage. And it really goes, like You've it just disappears. Too long. <laughs> like if you, if you, like at the very last, right. you know, for uh, Misty and Lindsay, and they're all standing yep. there, right? If there were, their uh, podiums were identified with color, I would relate to them a little bit more. Like I would see color, I would draw into the I dig it, I see what you're saying. They all, they all blended. I didn't know who was where and w what they were doing. Right. Unless the camera was right in their face. Right. So what could be sense? I can dig one that, yeah. Green. Like yeah. If, if, if the, the square had all their colors, four corners. And it, it just, I, I would start and finish. Like there would be like a flow, I think, to me. No, no, that that makes total sense. I think you know. I think on a direction of uh, of art, I think everything was kind of bare bones away. Yeah, it would, yeah, would be yeah. without all that. But with that being said, a splash of color here and there, duly noted. <laughs> Any, no, I, I dig it. Any, <laughs> anybody else? It sounds like he's trying to gloss it up a little bit more. <laughs> oh, I got, I'll, 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 I'll get some glitter because out there, because the, some crystal. Because, get because the nice challenges, and <laughs> because yeah. the challenges aren't necessarily made by rednecks. So it's not supposed to be like a redneck thing that you're just supposed to use the wood. Right. You could do the camouflage, you could do the red, you could do the blue, whatever. Zebra print. But it would be exciting to see. I, I just feel No, like, I'm down with yeah. it. I dig it. Yeah. Um, I think the show is amazing. And obviously mm -hmm. it's been working great. Yeah. Uh, you know, with what mm -hmm. you got. Um, the only thing that I say, um, which you Gotta is fire it, that host and find a real <laughs> son of a host. No, go ahead. Sorry about that catfish. Best host ever. Um, I personally hope. think, so something dangerous almost happened in that show, and that's the girls almost, if Lindsay hadn't, like, gone off the deep end, which obviously it worked, um, you almost had a complete girls alliance that almost destroyed all the guys on the island. And fortunately, you know, two of them were left, because I like to see a little co-ed um, mixed and matching, like I'm not 
Oh, you um, want the huts to be together so that the, everybody can sleep together in one place? <laughs> no, the, I mean, the boys shouldn't be separated than the girls. No, no, no. I'm saying the girls Good. almost got rid of all the guys, mm -hmm. and and which I love Redneck Island more than Survivor. But Survivor, because you hunt your own food, they like to keep the stronger players on for hunting and chefs, and they keep the guys on because they're better at catching fish and all that stuff. And okay. it prevents, like, all the weak ones or all of the girls and whatnot to try and get together and just eliminate all the good guys. Because I like to see, I want to see the, the uh, yeah, but stronger they always, players. But they always play to be able to get the food, too. Yeah, but so, okay, okay, but yeah. check it out. It I wasn't ain't, handed to them. I ain't never seen, they're talking about Survivor, right? Yeah. It's, how bad, it's how bad I don't watch TV. <laughs> so the, 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 the women are depending on the guys to bring the food back. Sort of. So Sometimes, you think if they, right, yeah. if, they, if, they, if they voted them guys off, you don't think that the crew would give those girls some food? No. <laughs> of course. No, I'm saying um, it was it was dangerous to a degree. Um, I, get, I get your point. What what I don't, I think that will play out a little differently. Like, for example, Wade in season two, his strategy was to um, become of service to the camp. So exactly. He was doing all the cooking. Remember that? He was mm -hmm. doing the cooking and he was he became he's the one that was straightening up and Bucket kind of took on that role a little bit, didn't yeah. he? And mm. so I think that that's how they're winning those positions because yeah, in the back of their mind the girls are like I might have to go up against a guy, but really out of the three three shows that we've seen so far, Jen wins then Wade wins, mm -hmm. then Lindsay wins, so it may not be that, no, that may not be an I issue. I completely get that. Like my, you, But you just didn't want to go, you you basically didn't want to see a show that was either all guys or all girls. Exactly. You want to see the mix. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and when that was just a, uh, a very surprising dynamic that happened. <laughs> Women had the power play, could have voted the guys off, it didn't happen, so, but with that being said, you know, when they go to voting, they go to voting, and yeah. I got no control over that. Every, I got a question over here. I do. <laughs> and, I, I, and, I, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, rude, or out of inappropriate. <laughs> but because there's a new law, and gay people can start getting married now, and I'm it's all about something that. that, you know, is, is pretty much been voiced. You know, for years. Yes. How come you guys haven't had one on, oh, on the was. show yet? Oh, there was. There was. Season one. one, Adam. <laughs> Adam was on season yeah. one. Adam. And he Hairdresser came in, from like, Nashville. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I missed that one. I better he have to go He went down to the final. What about other ethnicities? Yeah, how about, oh, well, Redneck is only. But anyway, to, to your point, yes. Adam was tremendous. You he go was. back and get I'm on. I'm going to go back to Go back and get on Hulu or YouTube mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. You watch Adam. He's got these uh, two red lips tattooed on his neck. He was absolutely wonderful you will oh. you will love this guy oh, he God. was you talk about quotes and just the life of the mm -hmm. party Adam was tremendous so there's okay. the, yeah. I'd like to see them mix it up a little bit and throw a couple celebrities in with the regular oh, red and maybe some redneck celebrities in with the well, regular give rednecks me a, give me a, give me a, like a celebrity redneck who I don't know, maybe a country star. Dolly a country. Parton? Yeah, I could totally see Dolly Parton there. That would be awesome. Well, Dolly Parton's <laughs> 80 years old. <laughs> <laughs> With she all due respect to Dolly Parton, she, I love her. But she'd float. Well. She'd float? Yeah, she does. I've got it. I've got it. Point June, for this. June from Honey Boo Boo. I would love to see her. <laughs> <laughs> what, if, what if you did have one of the contestants that was there really to throw a curveball and they were like an actor? Oh, like and they a were Actually, yeah, they were the yeah. one that was stirring the camp up. Yeah, but this isn't that show. No. These are interesting concepts, and you guys yeah. presented me a bunch of concepts last time I was here on the show, but yeah. these are real deal, yeah. authentic rednecks, and we get what we get. Okay, I say throw I'm, a couple celebrity rednecks okay. in. Okay. That might be a whole different show. Or to y'all's point, uh, you know, last time I was here, we get another couple of seasons, and we do the all-star right. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, redneck right. island. Yeah, 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 yeah okay, that would I, be okay, nice. I, I just want Liz, Liz was going down a road that I wanted to follow up on. She had said, what about some different ethnicities like uh, African Americans? Or, but are know, they Korean? redneck? Yeah. They could be. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely they could I'm be. Just, my mind no, is just I, opened up to a whole new world No, babe, now. I think that's, I think that's <laughs> ghetto, not redneck. No. no from a, in the country. In the country. Really? In there the country. Are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, you know, Stephen. Really? It's just culture. It's, uh, it's, it's just how you're raised, where you're yeah. brought up. Yeah. It's, you're raised it's with. not a nationality. Do you remember I looked it up on Wikipedia? Mm -hmm. And on Wikipedia yeah. it said hillbilly. And, Steve, you didn't like that. 
sorry, I kind of felt like, oh, did I insult you? But you know, if this does go, the show goes global, a lot of people don't know the term redneck. I didn't. So it's kind of like you're teaching the whole world what redneck a new is. Culture. And it's a culture. Yeah. So, you know, if it comes to the UK, we don't have especially rednecks, I suppose, up north in Wales, I would think of more outdoorsy people. Um, so it's not really a definite term anymore. It's kind of, you know how in the English dictionary every year there's new words yeah. added? Mm -hmm. I think you've kind of taken a term and you've now made it global and you've generalized yeah. it and it's softer and it's more the lifestyle as opposed to you know, a hillbilly, because it's right. not that anymore. Right. And it, it's not a derogatory term. And, and, and anybody of any race, color, creed can be a redneck. It's mm -hmm. simply, it's oh. the way I explain it, a person who lives or loves the, the outdoor lifestyle. And again, most of these people on the first three seasons have been cast in the, the south, southeastern parts of the states. You know, I'm looking for, for us to get up in, in the New York, in the Midwest, in the, in the heartland, and over to uh, the West Coast. Uh, from all over the United States, and uh, there, there's rednecks everywhere, and so we go through the casting process. I mean, anybody, I, is, anybody is welcome on Redneck Island, as long as you are the real deal. I guess you could live in a high rise on Park Avenue in New York City and love to fish, hunt, drink beer, and hang out, do the outdoorsy thing, and that you could be redneck culture. No, no, babe. They, they would no, send their maid to get the fish and hunt and all of that. <laughs> 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 I think what's good about the show is that it's actually empowering people that have been survivors off the land, right? Yeah. And I think society has gone the other way. Everybody pretends they've got money. Everybody likes having flash cars. And I think this show is really good for society and culture because it's, it's about, you know, it's about people being tough and getting to know the land and maybe being outdoors and playing hobbies. I mean, nowadays, so many kids are just playing computer games, and this is yeah. teaching them get outside, get shooting, get, you know, just well, maybe not the shooting part. No, you know what I mean? Could be catapulting, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of really getting us back with nature, and I think that's fun to watch. Swig of beer for Liz with the big brain. <laughs> I got another one, though. I think the grand prize, a double-wide trailer. They're going to buy it anyway. No, maybe we'll just give them a double-wide. That ain't a bad idea. Forward thinking. That's right. You heard it here on the After Buzz Show. 10,000 cash <laughs> in double-wide. If, if you win it, it's going to go up for sale the minute it comes in. <laughs> but see, the smart redneck would get a single wide, save money, put the rest in the bank. <laughs> see? There you go. Mm. There you go. You could even get Paul Latou from Beverly Hills to do the interior. Oh, design. I could decorate it for you. Yeah, lots Bad of camo. <laughs> lots of camo. What a prize. Yes, I could do it. Well, you guys. Um, that way you could come down, test out all the gimmicks, and then go do the decorating thing. There it's you a great go. TV exposure. I could do the color. Oh, forget Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> Going to Mexico. <laughs> we had a we had a great time. Um, we want to do this again. We're really excited about Redneck Island. We fell in love with your cast. Okay, they became part of our yeah. family. Um, they we've embraced them. They've embraced us. Um, as, you know, I would like to just kind of close on um, just any last minute thoughts anyone might have. Uh, as far as Lindsay goes, she now joins the ranks of Jen and Wade as $100,000 Redneck Island champion, and that's a huge honor. I mean, that's. I mean, I'm so impressed with her gameplay. So with that being said, do you feel like you want to add anything else into the mix? Start clockwise. Anybody? Congratulations, Lindsay. Call me up. I want to come celebrate your mm -hmm. double wide. I've got some pretzels and beer. I'm coming over. Give me the address. <laughs> My favorite part was no beer, gut, no glory. Do you remember that quote? <laughs> I have giggled on that and dined out on that for ages. And she didn't have a beer gut. So well done. Wow. Wow. Well, well, being an agent, I have several of the Redneck Island contestants contacting me to represent them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting. You know, people get a dose of being on television and getting treated like you know, very nice yeah. human beings and it's a, it's a it's an yeah. interesting process so there's a lot of people yeah. that come to these shows and all of a sudden it's like hey yep they've got the Holly cool. Hollywood yeah. bit them in the ass they're ready yeah. to come. <laughs> you get bitten by the bug you get bitten by the bug That's right. but you know as, as you know it's tough out here yeah so you can be on a show for a little bit of time and if it parlays into another endeavor right power to you mm. um I've loved Redneck Island. I've really learned a lot more about, you know, part of what is my culture because I am 
a citizen here of the United States, and I love it. And, uh, you know, for the first time in a while, I actually ate a hamburger and remembered that this came from a cow that someone was taking care of on a ranch. Oh. You know, I was just like, hey, you know, there was a, a human being who uh, dealt with this. You know, wow. think of it just food. Don't even realize where it comes it from. It wasn't McDonald's, right? Catfish, the words you, <laughs> catfish, the words you speak are as true now as they were 500 years ago. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a bunch of BS. It doesn't even mean it. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old Phil Hartman line I ripped off from Saturday Night Live. Go ahead, uh, Angelina. <laughs> No, I just want you know. I just want to thank you for you know embracing uh, the AfterBuzz you know after shows that we've enjoyed you coming in and chatting with us, and we look forward to doing it again. And for those of you who want to experience Steve Austin and further re you know get connected with him, don't forget he does have a podcast that airs twice a week called the Steve Austin Show on Podcast One. Make sure you listen to it because it's actually a hoot. It's hilarious. He has great guests. Great guests. <laughs> She's a guest. Go ahead. Uh, okay. All right. So, yes, great guest. And um, anyway, I will turn it over to you. Where can they find you on social media? You can media? find me on Twitter at Steve Austin BSR. The BSR stands for Broken Skull Ranch. Oh. You can find me on the BrokenSkullRanch.com on my website. You can listen to the Steve Austin Show at PodcastOne.com and iTunes. And that's all I got to say. But thanks to all of you guys. It's nice to meet you two guys. Talk to you on the phone. Yeah. And uh, uh, Angelina and Young Catfish yeah. and Liz. And Second time around with you guys. I thank yeah. you guys all for doing this because, you know, the After Buzz thing is the hot thing to do, and we've got a great show, and I'm glad you guys support it. Thank we're, you very much. We're, we're fans of you, and we're yes. fans of Redneck Island. Thank, thank you, you for very coming. Much. We had a great time. What, what do you want me to say, Angela? Well, just where they can find you, Liz Farr. Oh, do you know it's really funny? funny? I just realized my family moved to Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for this. My uncle's family started uh -huh. the rice plantations in Alabama. So I've been oh thinking, I have a connection. You, do. you could be a redneck. Yeah. Oh. I haven't told you about that before, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first? <laughs> I am shocked. <laughs> I am shocked. A beauty queen. Remember. Beauty queen right. who's got roots of... Redneck. Right. Right. Yes. Roots of Redneck. Okay, <laughs> Paul, Paul Patrick, where can we find you guys on social media? PP Boys, Patrick Simpson, mm -hmm. Paula Two, and, and this Wednesday, August 7th, we're on Raising Fame on TLC. Wonderful. After Honey Boo Boo. What? <laughs> <laughs> She's and our lead in. Catfish is still not on social media at the moment, so. <laughs> ah, Catfish, you're killing me. Oh, it's killing me. Take the plunge. Thank you, everybody who's watched, and we'll see you next season for uh, Redneck Island Season 4, Bye. right? We love you, everybody. Bye. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.